Okay, people, welcome back to another play day. It was just two weeks ago that I said I'm going to start doing smaller play days in order to do them more frequently. And in my brain, I was like, oh man, more frequently, that means... I should probably do some customs. And that's what I did. In fact, I customized these figures in the past few days. Well, okay, Chewbacca I had going, and this week I finally buckled down, finished him, and then jumped on the rest of these. And usually it takes me a while to finish anything. I'll start something, put it to the side. Oh, something new, shiny, I'm gonna start on this. And then I'll go through a few weeks of, uh, I don't wanna make a mess painting and all that. But not this week, I was just, I was productive. <laughs> and that feels weird, but nice. In fact, I even have works in progress that I'll show at the end, and this isn't even all of them. As I was walking in here, I had an idea for something else and started piecing it together. <laughs> That's why I'm shooting so late in the day. Well, you don't know that. Video's going up. It's just a day. For me, it was a Tuesday. First up, here is a messing around the lab Ant-Man. I saw this being discussed on the Foosh forums, and then... I believe it was Norm came along and said that he had done it and it was fairly simple. It just took some dremeling. This is a retro carded Ant-Man. You know, that very, very skinny one. And this is the lab coat and arms from Mr. Fantastic. Those arms were swappable with Mr. Fantastic, so there's a big chunky peg on them. But Ant-Man has a butterfly joint, so when you heat this up, that gets very soft. It was easy enough to pop his arm out and then Okay, it wasn't so easy to put this in. Like I said, the peg was big. I had to snip the end off of it a bit, and then the mushroom part of it was way bigger than the hole in the shoulder. So I had to take a Dremel, make the hole bigger, and just kept test fitting it until this popped in there and stayed. But the reason I like this is because, again, this was a scrawny Ant-Man, and with the lab coat on, not only does it make him scientific, it gives him a little bit more bulk. I mean, you can still see the legs sticking out the bottom, but yeah, I don't know. This makes this useful again, since there's a new Astonishing Ant-Man coming to Target, where I like the helmet a hell of a lot better, and it's a bulkier body. I think I do want to eventually find a Hank Pym head, some blonde hair, a classic look. That way, you know, he's not working in his helmet. Unless he's working with ants, eh, I can justify anything, can't I? Oh, and before I forget, those are Ant-Man's hands. They pop right into the sleeve, so not a problem there. Here's a hair swap that I saw Boog do in one of his recent videos. This is, of course, the Marvel Legends Excalibur Shadow Cat, but this is the hair from a Mattel WWE Elite Series 77 Miss Elizabeth. Now, it's not perfect. I mean, we've established that when I think of Excalibur, I think of Alan Davis. And there, Kitty had more of a swoop going to the right, the curls are tighter, there's more length, but I gotta say, dang, th this is way closer than the stock hair we got. Now, I've already shown a custom of this before where I used a cast of the Toy Biz Marvel Legends 6 Phoenix hair. There, I do think the front is more Excalibur Shadowcat-like, but it, there's all, well, okay, there's curls too, but it's got a swoop to it. See how it sticks up like that? It's like that because I had to angle it forward a bit. I just call it windswept. But I'm also really liking this, and it's a lot easier. With my first one, I had to dremel the hell out of it. This, you just heat up the heads, tear at the hair until it comes off, and okay, there is some room up under there, but I just took some blue tack and shoved it in there and then made sure the hair was down on the front of the face and everything was centered up. You also have to make sure that the collar's here or you're gonna get a lot of pushback. I am leaning towards this one because, look at that, it was almost made for that shoulder. Same thing on this side, sitting right down in the back, it's neutral. This will be my action shadow cat and this will be my hanging around the lighthouse kitty, I guess. And yeah, I got two Excalibur sets. Don't judge me. I cannot tell you how excited I am for Hasbro to kick back into Astonishing X-Men. I'm so excited that I went to the shelf and pulled down the danger I customized. It's been a long time ago. I do believe I hit it with some Tamiya clear blue. That was to add some bluishness to the overall color scheme because if you remember the original, it was a very gray blue, very light. But then I think I went overboard and hit it with some Calm Art transparent smoke. There, it darkened it down even more. I think too much. But boy, did it make it shiny. At the time, I thought, you know what? That's okay. Onto the shelf with my other Astonishing X-Men customs. But there's new Astonishing figures coming, and I thought, yeah, this is not the greatest figure in the world. In fact, it's very hindered. It's hard to stand up. She leans to her left. You have to kick this to the side and have her looking a little bit like that. I thought, man, I wish I could put this in reverse, but I can't because 
this is a hell of a coating on here. So I got on eBay and grabbed another one. That's what I do. Because looking at the figure again after all these years, I noticed that there was this nice sculpt work inside the dark parts of the body. And looking at the reference art, those are all highlighted by this kind of bright turquoise color. So what I do, I hunched over the desk for several hours and kind of just psh, touched with my paintbrush in all of these places. And it's not the prettiest once you get right up on it. In fact, it's kind of messy, but at a distance, standing on the shelf, it adds a little pizzazz to it. I think the biggest thing was the eyes. If you go back to the original promotional images, like the one on the back of the package, the prototype had some color to the dark parts and the black eyes, but once the figure was released, the white eyes just stuck out at you and pretty plain in the paint department. So that's what I did here, blacked out the eyes, added the kind of under eyebrow, and then hit some dots for the iris pupil, whatever. They're not the straightest, but Give me a break. I'm getting old. For that, I used this Master's Touch Fine Art Studio silicone brush. I picked these up thinking, oh, I don't have to worry about bristles getting all out and everything. And I'm having a hard time adapting to it when it comes to painting like lines and such. But for little dots like that, you just dip this in the paint, boop, and it's a circle. <laughs> I don't have to worry about uh, stray bristles messing up something. Don't get me wrong, I still got my magnifiers, the headlamp, I have to hold the figure right up at my face and... Oh! Again, like I said, it's not perfect, but it'll stand on the shelf. It'll hang out with the new Astonishing X-Men. I did gloss it up with some Mr. Hobby, Mr. Super Clear gloss. It was just to give it that metallic look, but now that I... Well, now that I thought I was finished and I'm looking at it, I think... Mm, do I need to add just a little blue to the overall color scheme? Do I want to do this again? Hit it with some clear blue and forego the smoke, hoping that it doesn't go this dark? And would I have to mask off all this? Or do I just slap it on here and then repaint all these little squiggles? I have been wanting to do an armored Thrawn for a long, long time. In fact, I've had this armor kit for a long, long time. Especially since the Archive Edition came out. That has the better face print. The eyes are a bit more realistic, as realistic as blood red eyes get. Whereas on the original, it was just red with a couple of dots. This week, I finally got around to priming it up and slapping it on them. And I had to do some dremeling to get this fit on because the rank badge was sticking off the chest. In order to lay this down flat, that had to go. Which doesn't matter because the rank badge is on the outside now, and I'm never taking this off. Same thing for the hair. The helmet would go on with this sticking up like this, but it had to go in order to put it where I wanted it. Down across the brow, almost to the shoulders. So I had to dribble some hair off. Hey, he's stressed out a bit chasing Ezra down. I feel your pain, Thrawn. Now that I have this in the Bright Lights big city of my review space, the bright white really stands out and I feel like I should have went almost slightly gray with it. One, so it won't reflect this much light and two, to kind of contrast against the uniform. But I don't know, when it's not this bright, it looks good. Thrawn doesn't care. He'll wear white any time of the year. But while I'm talking about the white, that is just straight primer. And when you get impatient with primer, it likes to bubble up on you. When you're spraying something like this, just thin even layers with some space in between. Don't be like Robo. Don't be impatient. And then finally, for finished customs, it's not a play day without a Wookiee of some kind. And here is Chewbacca. This is a Black Series updated Chewbacca body with a single joint here and then a Diamond Select Star Wars Chewbacca head. And I used that because it was left over from my Black Chrysanthemum build. Aha! I made you look again! I snuck him into another video. And that head is a good sculpt, so I slapped it on this body and... <laughs> It's proportionate. In fact, I like it better than the usual Hasbro heads. Well, this is a better... <laughs> Turn it around. This is a better comparison. Don't get me wrong, it's close in size and everything. But this one, the the sculpt is a bit more deeper. The, I, I don't know, there's something about it. Now, I probably shouldn't have went that dark around the eyes and brought some lighter color around the nose there. That and the eyes are a little too bright. I did paint those in an ivory color, and then used water slide decals for the eyes themselves. Look up 386 eyes, iris, and pupil 1 12th scale. This is what you'll get. You go from brown to greens to blues, and you just cut them out, stick them in water for a minute, slide them off into the spot you want, center them up, and then, eh, 
Not bad. Way better than I could paint them. Another reason I wanted to do this is to make Chewbacca brown. I've looked at the Black Series for so long that I've gotten used to the orangey brown color they use, but then I go back and look at the movies and stuff, or the, oh, hey, what about this? The SH Figu Arch Chewbacca, and I wanted to get a color closer to that. But then they didn't do his darker hair on top of the head, upper arms, upper legs, so I wanted to one of my figures to do that too so I came back and painted all that in. I've always thought of this is too small and then the black series is too big and this doesn't change the height at all but it feels more Chewbacca now you know and that's not me tooting my own horn that's not well I made a far superior Chewbacca for my shelf. <laughs> I'm just happier with this one next to Han. I think of this as a more classic-y Chewbacca. For a couple of works in progress, I teased this on the last weekly. And this is the reason I had the primer out that made me go, oh, I could finally do that Thrawn. <laughs> I've got the paint here and I still rushed it. This is gonna be Captain Britain's second Excalibur costume. And what this is is a Hercules torso, upper arms to the elbow, waist, and then legs down to the boot line. And then the rest is a Captain Britain. Glove cuffs, boots to get rid of Hercules' sandals, transferred the upper boots over to the knees, and then the head, which, again, going back to Alan Davis, it's not a perfect representation in plastic. It should be more helmet-like here. I'll work on some resin prints to do some replacements. But my whole reason for doing this is to get a wider look at the shoulders. Hercules also tapers a bit. This is just like a, a square. It's a box. I think of Braddock as wide up here working his way down. This isn't perfect, but it gives it more mass up here. It's mostly the shoulders that I wanted. But now that I have it all primered, it's veiny. And I may have to take that off because the costume's on top of it. That, and I'm not sure I like these wrinkles going across. I want that clean look again going back to Excalibur art. So I'm not sure if I'm happy with this and I'd hate to go through all the trouble of masking those lines off and getting them straight and those damn diamonds and however the hell I'm going to do that and then going man I wish I'd swapped out the crotch piece with this or or use these legs even though hmm, I, I, I'm on the fence here. I'm still, well, work in progress. That's what we're talking about. And then there's this. <laughs> this is very rough. I started this today. Last Fooshcast Live, we were messing around, going through my resin prints, and I found this Cassandra Nova. I got this cast along with some others from Rebo Bleedo a while back. And I'm actually glad I found it during the live stream because Smoke and Joe suggested, hey, you could get the Jurassic World Amber Collection Ellie Sattler, and that may work. And I'm liking what I'm seeing up here. And the legs would have worked, but man, did they make her tall. So I'm playing with this idea. You gotta get the jawed purse on the side there. So I'm trying to figure out if this is gonna work. The problem is Hasbro, Mattel, and Mattel doesn't really like sinking things. <laughs> it's just kind of flat. So these hips on the leg, they're kind of narrow for that socket there. Then I'm not sure if I should just put Ellie's hips back on and then try to work the pants into those because this is looking crotchy. Hmm. That and yes, the head has to come down on the neck a bit. Mattel, <laughs> you're crazy with the lengths of necks. Not locked in though. Again, work in progress. <laughs> Parts and pieces. This is kind of the fun part, but it's also the frustrating part because you just want things to work. Go together. I want you to work with this. <laughs> I'll make it work. So at the end of the day, again, we got to play. That's a good damn day. I know it's kind of a weird play day because I'm not showcasing other people's stuff, which is one of my favorite things to do. But because, like I said, this is going to be a little more frequent from now on, hopefully. I say that out loud and who knows what will happen. Really, this was to get these out of the way. So my brain will reset and move on to finishing stuff I've started and other stuff. Here's this. These are done. Well, I don't know about you, Danger. You may still be a work in progress. And then who knows what'll be in the next play day. Well, I say that, I may touch up Chewbacca's face. It is a little dark. There's a little too much shadow. But at the same time, I, you look at pictures of Chewbacca and it's, most of the time, it's hard to see his eyes. And I've got them peering out a little too much. Then again, it's an action figure. And... I'm pretty happy with where I am at the moment. Never perfectly happy, so who knows? 